<laughs> hello, hello. We've already got one watcher already. That is awesome. So tonight we are going to be doing a live bolt jaw tong demo. Uh, if you're watching this on the replay, I will be taking and demonstrating this pair of bolt jaw tongs for anybody who's watching. So, hey there, Graham. Good to see you here. Hey. Move this around here. Russell Feller, good to have you here. What's up, John? Brian Neely, good to see you. Glad to have you all here. Mitchell Scripter, awesome. Man, we've got everybody funneling in tonight. That is good. We have already got 31, 35 people here. Six thumbs up. That's awesome. So glad to take and have everybody here. Brandon and M, glad it's your first live stream. Glad you're here. Hey there, Mike. Awesome, awesome. Good to have you here. Curtis, same thing. Hello, everyone. Glad to have you here. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Made fun of you about the measurements. I don't know. I'm not good at measurements on camera, so I've been getting made fun of a little bit. People don't like the metric so much. Hey, I'm glad you like it, Mike. All the videos on tongs. I'm really enjoying making them. You know, I'm trying to take and showcase how many varieties of tongs you can get out of just one simple method, uh, the same length bar stock and how many different types of tongs you can make so hey bj waters thank you i'm so glad that you're enjoying the channel i'm so glad you guys are enjoying it and liking it so i'm gonna lose these glasses so if anybody's noticed the hat is back the hat is back it is getting colder so i can wear my hats again enjoy it Oh, Mickey Swift, uh, you never got to reply how many tongs do I have? Uh, let's see here. Currently, I think I have about 30, 35 tongs. I did make a video on my favorite tongs, by the way. Awesome, Fusion Russ. I'm glad that this is a great way to end the night. Corey Shire, awesome to have you here. I'm glad you're here, too. Yeah, John Coffey, those, those railroad spike tongs, those are real nice tongs. Those are going to be a future live demo, by the way, and a giveaway. I got a hot water bottle under my hat. Nope. <laughs> awesome. Glad you enjoyed the video. They're hunting for life. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure where it's at. I mean, here in Dayton, just out in New Lebanon, it's probably like 50 degrees. I get a little chilled, you know, coming down from the hotter temperatures of everything. So, real quick, I'm going to grab this sheet. Got a couple of announcements. Bodie the Builder is here. Good to have you here, Bodie. Tong, 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 tong. Hello. <laughs> that is hilarious. I haven't heard that song since Cisco made it a long time ago. Well, it's not that long ago, but it feels like it's a long time ago. I bet you there's most people don't even remember that song. Hey, FFC Rick, good to have you here. So I'm going to read off a couple of announcements. Um, I'm stalling for time right now. Jessica's putting the final touches on the power hammer plans. She's getting them all scanned in uh, for the beam hammer that we will be releasing the video right after this live stream is over. So make sure you check that out. Uh, we'll announce it again at the end of this live stream. Um, one of the things I want to announce about that, I did not get them converted to metric yet. Uh, so if you buy plans later this evening for the beam hammer, uh, the power hammer that I'm building for anybody who's new, I will take and put uh, 
whoever buys plans and wants them in metric, all you got to do is shoot me a message. And when I get them converted to metric, I will send you an updated copy of those plans with the revision of it being in metric as well. Um, for anybody who, who wants to go that route, if you're buying plans later this evening. So 46 in St. Paris. Yeah, I'm not sure what temperature it is right now in the shop. I, I know it's quite, I mean, it's starting to get pretty brisk here. All right. Hey, glad to see you. Let's see here. Um, make sure I catch up with everybody. Hey, JG Clark 45. Uh, JG Clark 45 was the winner of our last Tong uh, uh, giveaway. And yeah, so we'll be glad to get those tongs out to you uh, here this start of next week. We'll have those in the mail to you for sure. Um, but I'll, I'll get back to my announcements real quick. Uh, so announcements, the blacksmithing class that I will be teaching on November 11th uh, from the hours of 9 to 5. Uh, it's, a, it's a Saturday on November 11th. The cost will be $60. And we'll be doing a forged candle holder. And I believe I have it if you hold on a second. All right. I'll be teaching a class on making this forged candle holder here. And that'll be next weekend, really. So that, that's really coming up. This year's flying by. So hopefully you guys aren't... Uh, so if you guys want to attend a class with me... Uh, I think there's still a few spots open if anybody wants to take and get in on that for next weekend. If you live in the Ohio area uh, or around Troy, Ohio, or can get there economically, yeah, I think it'll be a good class. Everybody will leave with something. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, so the other related news that I have is we are going to have, in conjunction with the Power Hammer plans that are being released at the end of this video tonight, the Beam Hammer... We have a shirt we made up for anybody who wants to do that. Hey, look, I look like Wilson. I don't know if anybody will ever watched Tool Time. But anyways, that's a little demo of what the shirt looks like. You can get that over at www.teespring.com forward slash beam hammer. And you should be able to take and find the, find the custom t-shirt that way if you plan on building yourself a beam hammer. And uh, it's a great way of supporting the channel as well. You mean home improvement. Yeah, home improvement. That's right. Yeah. Tool time. Yeah, that was his show on home improvement. Yep. You're right. <laughs> yep, Don Hall, I found the hat. I heard you the other day. You commented on that. I'm like, yeah, I kind of miss that hat. I'm like, oh, yeah, my head's cold. I'll wear the hat today. Brent Leg. Um, let's see here. The next class I... I will be having will be in February uh, time frame and I'm not quite sure what it will be it, what it will be on I believe it will be on one of my four stair gas forge burners we'll be doing a class or a workshop then on that hey you're welcome Mike Bosley I don't think so Tim <laughs> I needed that Mike Oh, uh, let's see here. Yeah, Mike Bosley, good to have you here. I'm glad that you uh, that you're finding all the information informative. So, so for anybody who's wondering why I'm just standing here talking, I'm waiting on Jessica to take and get out here and uh, help me with the, the camera. She's putting on the final touches of everything uh, with the power hammer plans and whatnot. But I'm looking forward to taking doing these tonight. Uh, let's see here, hunting for life. Uh, nope, never been invited to teach a class down there. Oh, I suppose if an organization wanted me to travel somewhere to teach a class, I could try to find a way of fitting it in my schedule. Oh no, a three-page essay before midnight. Okay, for the few who have uh, haven't known me very long, how long I've been blacksmithing, I'm coming back. I'm coming up on ten years, so I've been forging for nine years of my life. Um, 
year number 10 will be coming up July. Well, actually, it'll be like July 20th or something like that will be my 10-year mark in the trade of blacksmithing as a whole. Um, Bodie, make sure you stop back out and check out for the knives, uh, for the knife tong giveaway that we're going to be giving away tonight. So, And if anybody needs to know what those look like, let me grab them real quick. So this was <laughs> just procrastinating. I know how that one is. So, so these are the knife tongs that we'll be giving away at some point during this live stream. We made these in the previous live stream. And so Jessica still got to get all the names cut out and put all into the hat. Do the little iron in the hat and we'll get those shipped out as well to people. Um, and then what we are going to be working on forging tonight are the bolt jaw tongs. And then at, somewhere in this live stream, we're going to give you all the secret catchphrase again to take and comment uh, on the playback of this video in order to win these, the knife tongs as well. So, so we'll have that and we are releasing the power hammer plans tonight. So there will be the official beam hammer trailer and the plans will be available on the well on the website. So Cody Dixon, oh wait, I don't make knives. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, John Coffee, I will be at Sofa tomorrow. That's my full plan to be there. Yeah, Corey Shire procrastinating takes up too much time. So uh, the URL for the beam hammer, the plans, uh, they will be in the follow-up video. Um, they won't be in this video description, but the, the link to the beam hammer plans themselves will be in the uh, video that's following this one tonight. It'll be another post. If you've hit the subscribe, uh, the subscribe bell, you'll get the notification as soon as that video is post and the plans are live on the website. Uh, but anybody who needs to go to the website, if you want to start checking it out sooner rather than later, it is blacksmithpdfs.com. You can go check it out over there. We've got a couple different plan bundles and things of that nature for anybody who wants to do that. That's how we support the channel and uh, doing tongue giveaways. And, you know, it pays for my time to be able to do all this for everybody and uh, teach, which I love to do. So... Definitely consider that if you can. Thank you, Eric Davis. Yeah, they're a very nice pad of tongs. If you give me just one second here, I'm going to grab all the various tongs I've made, which we've got videos coming up. All these tongs here that I've made here recently, those are the knife making tongs, the bolt jaw tongs. The pickup tongs that I made. Set some of these down. The railroad spike tongs that I made. That was just a recent video. And the scrolling tongs all came out of the same size piece of flat bar stock. Quarter inch by one inch by ten inches long bar of flat stock. Every last one of those came out of that. Um, Yep, every last one of those came out of that. So it's a very, very easy method that I like to do for my tongs. <laughs> Tomorrow working version, that's good. Oh. Hey, Mike, Michael Crane, I'm glad you're getting ready to build my torch stand. It's a nice stand. I, I use it a lot in the shop. How did I get my start in smithing? I got my start in smithing when my wife found me a coal forge at a garage sale there, BJ Waters. Um, Nina Dunich, I don't know how to pronounce your name there, bud, but uh, you're very welcome for all the content. Hammer to anvil weight ratio. I've probably asked, I've answered this one before, FFC Rick. 
but I'll go ahead and happy to answer it again. Uh, once you get above a 100 pound anvil or you get a 100 pound anvil and up, it doesn't much matter. Uh, you know, anything under 100 pounds, I went smith with over a three pound hammer. It, you know, you're not really, you're not gaining anything, so to speak. Anything over 100 pounds, it doesn't much matter. You're not going to be able to swing a hammer heavy enough or hard enough to really make much of a difference to overcome that amount of mass. Hey, I'm glad you like that, Corey Shire. Yeah, we do like doing the business blacksmithing videos. We've got a few more that we've got that we're working on and trying to put out. Oh. <laughs> John Lavender. Yeah, got to check the layout marks on those on the tong jaws. Uh, otherwise, you make big mistakes. So, uh, yeah, you know the the tongs. So. Graham made it makes a perfect uh, point, and this isn't just for me. And I thank you so much for that kind words there, Graham. But when you talk about, uh, I'll try to catch up with everybody's comments here in a second. When you're talking about uh, the type of work that I'm doing, yes, part of it's the experience to be able to, uh, you know, accurately forge everything. Uh, like I'm doing with the tongs and be able to put the hammer blows on point and stuff like that. A lot of that does come down to a bit of experience, but most of it just comes down to having a strong foundation in the fundamentals of the blacksmithing. So learning how to do your offset, learning what half on half off blows are, what they look like, how they feel uh, in the hammer and the anvil and how it all works together and understanding those basic techniques better will better help anybody be able to do tongs that, um, you know, just like mine. I anything that you see me, seen me do, they just have basic techniques. This offset here is just two half on half off blows. That's all that is. There's, there's no difference here or here. They're just two shoulders. This here is just drawing out a taper and rounding it up. Likewise, the reins is nothing more than just a longer taper. So those are very basic fundamentals. Of course, they're a little more difficult to take and do. You, you know, it's always easier to talk about than to do. Uh, you know, but that's where the time and the craft will help you out after a period of time. So, yeah, whack it till it's long enough. So, Buds Morris, good to have you here. Hello from Dayton, Ohio. I'm glad you like the tutorials. Uh, Mike Bosley, uh, instructions for drawing out the tongs on your website. Uh, I don't have a, I don't have instructionals on how to draw out the tongs. It's essentially the same process. It's just a longer uh, drawing out process. There's two main forms of drawing out that people usually use. I've went over three forms of drawing out which one's on the flat face of the anvil, the other one's at the edge of the anvil, and then the last one is on the horn of the anvil. Those are all very easy ways of drawing out material. Um, on power hammer, sorry. Guys, I'm getting behind on your uh, comments here, so I will try to... <laughs> Bodhi, unless you're swole like me. Let's see here. Try to catch up with you guys here. Um, where do I buy rivets for tongs? Uh, I I haven't had to buy rivets. I usually get them over at uh, Blacksmith's Depot. Is where I buy them at most of the time. But there are some sellers online through, I believe it's eBay. There's some sellers that you can get tong rivets there as well. If I had one set of hammer dies, would they be flat dies, drawing dies, or combination dies? I'm assuming you're talking about the pow power hammer, Stephen Jolly. I would go with flat dies. Flat dies, in my opinion, are the most universal. With a flat die system, you can put you can put spring fullers under it. You can put all sorts of other type of tooling, drawing, splitting, punching. Uh, tooling and you can't do that as well with like combo dies and you definitely can't do it with drawing dies They're strictly made for drawing out. Uh, I would say it depends on what type of work you're getting into 
for those. Okay, let's see here. Yes, the materials for the beam hammer are very easily found. Uh, it's standard construction grade lumber. Uh, I've done everything with mild steel, everything off the shelf that I can get a hold of. And so it's just fabricating and then, uh, you know, pretty much bolting and, you know, some welding and stuff, putting stuff together. Well, well I'm glad about that. Old Bapo 83, yep. Uh, there, you know, it does take a lot of work and a lot of effort to put out as many videos as we do. We put out 14 videos a week. Uh, just in case anybody's wondering about the numbers, that's two a day, once in the morning, once in the evening. And then we have a live stream every Friday at 7 p.m. Just starting, so. So for anybody who's joining us, I'll go ahead and repeat this again. Hopefully Jessica will get here soon. Uh, if not, I think I'm going to just start forging without her. <laughs> oh, um, tonight we are going to be giving away our tongs for anybody who entered in the drawing for those last week. Those are the knife making tongs. We will be giving these away. Tonight we will be forging, as the demonstration piece, we will be forging these bolt jaw tongs that I made in a video earlier this week. And we will be giving the special catchphrase that you have to comment in the replay of this video in order to take and get yourself set up to win potentially these in the next live stream. That's what we will be doing tonight for anybody who's just joining us. Also tonight is our official release of the beam hammer. Power hammer. Yeah, it is hard to keep up with us, but... That's okay. They're there for you whenever you've got downtime, Bodie. Yeah, California, that one's an interesting one. I, uh, I don't know very many Smiths at all in California. I do believe there's a man by the name of... Uh, yeah, now, uh, Mark Asprey, I believe, lives in California. You may want to may want to look him up. He might be a good resource. He's part of the Banna uh, leadership team. I'm glad you like it, FFC Rick. That really means a lot to me. Yeah, people love giveaways. <laughs> that's because that's where all the hardworking people live. <laughs> that's funny. No comment on that one. Um, let's see here. Steel for punches and drifts. Hot Iron Forge asked. I get my steel for punches and drifts. I get punches and stuff all from Coil Spring. And I get my drifts from Mild Steel. Just standard Mild Steel is what I use for my uh, drifts. Pat Simic, the way you enter to win, uh, the, the entering for these tongs is already over, uh, for the knife tongs. The way we do it is we give a secret catchphrase for anybody who decided to watch the entire video of me demonstrating things like that. So it's kind of a loyalty deal. Uh, we give a secret catchphrase that you have to comment in the replay of this video. That means when it's published to YouTube as an official video. We give a, a catchphrase that you're supposed to say in the comment section to get entered to win that on the next live stream. So that's how the li that's how the live stream giveaways work, and I think we're going to continue to take and do that. So <laughs> I should call my power hammer after uh, Thor's hammer. That's funny. That's awesome, David L. Hyder Jr., good to see you too. We are doing very well. The uh, wisdom teeth are almost all but healed now, so that's great. Uh, one thing I did do today, anybody see that? That's a nasty burn I got today. I don't know if anybody sees that. Don't freak too many people out. But, yeah. 
Uh, I got that today. I was forging up a billet of Damascus. Working on something there special. But that's part of the video. I'll give you a little secret hint. That's part of the video of the Beam Hammer trailer that will be released right after this video uh, is concluded tonight. After this forging demonstration. So... What do you do to treat your burns? Usually I'll rub aloe vera on it if I have it. Uh, I don't, however, so I will probably just, I rinse it under cool water and then, uh, yeah, try not to get it dirty and infected pretty much. Yeah, salve, lots of salve. Yeah, and to tell you what that was, so that was a big puddle and I mean a big molten puddle when I did the consolidation weld of the bill of Damascus it squirted out a lot of flux and that flux went up and rolled down inside my glove so I was wearing a very loose top glove like this you can see how those are flared out and here's a danger wearing some gloves sometimes I'll try to put that on there for you see that Somehow it decided to go gloop, and go down in there and it was rolling down on my fingertips as I pulled off my glove and as you can tell it was too late by then so Some silver sulfadazine on it, huh? <laughs> Get it hot and quench it in oil. <laughs> there you go That would work so Silver sulfazine. I'll try to remember that. Silvadine Roy. Okay, I'll do it. My, I'll do my best to look that up and put that on there. Yep, smithing the gloves. Now I usually wear a glove on my left hand. I usually wear a glove on my left hand, and if it's a lot of really big work I'm working on, I'll wear gloves on both hands. But usually I wear tight-fitting gloves. I think that's what got me this time because tight-fitting gloves aren't going to let anything roll down your sleeves. These loose gloves that you get, these little welding glove type deals, those are like horrible for that type of thing. It just, I mean, it's just a catcher. I mean, it's a catch-all. So not good at all. Not good at all. But let's see here. Put ice on it until you almost feel frostbite. Huh, cool. I didn't know that, Corey Shire. Now, I used to have an aloe vera plant, and I used to break off aloe vera and rub it on there, and within a day or two, that straight aloe vera would clear that right up, uh, no problem. White gloves, huh? I'll, to, I'll take a look at that. He wears them, huh? Yeah, Bodie, if he doesn't stop spamming that, you can go ahead and block him. For anybody who knows, Bodie will drop the wrench on you if you're a spammer on the channel. He is one of my moderators. So is Mike. How would you advise him on which road to go down for forge, coal, propane, really big campfire, and a hairdryer? <laughs> Mike D. Um, advising somebody to start blacksmithing. Most of the time, I'm going to advise you to go the cheapest route first. If you don't know whether you're really going to like it or not or enjoy it, I would say I would say use whatever you can get your hands on. If that's a barbecue fire pit, then just use a barbecue fire pit. If that's a ground forge, use that with charcoal. Uh, with a hair dryer, that's a cheap way of getting started to see if you even like it. Uh, I would not invest a lot of money in tooling. Now, once you can invest money in tooling, the way I believe on tooling is there's nothing more better than anything else. So, coal forge is ranked exactly the same with gas forge. Gas, coal forge has its advantages and disadvantages. Gas forge has its advantages and disadvantages. And you should have both in your toolbox. You should have both in your toolbox. Um, yep, coffee can, can forge can get started too, so... Yeah, we need a hammer and not a wrench. Oh, YouTube's bad about getting back to people about those sort of things. <laughs> you know, just picture that the wrench is a hammer and that you can drop the hammer on people. So, 
Alright, well, apparently Jessica is having some issues trying to get going and getting out here, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and flip the camera around, and I'm going to get started on actually forging these tongs out for everybody. And then, uh, or actually, you know what, maybe I can tilt it like this. Let's see here, can you guys see the anvil? Yeah, that's kind of horrible. Um, so, I'll have to see what I can do here. I'm going to probably flip this around and see if I can't film myself. Metallurgy. The propane removes carbon from the steel. Hmm, I don't know. I'm not a metallurgist, uh, Graham. But, I mean, that's something interesting to look into. I don't know if that's true or not because gas, I mean, a lot of people use the gas forges for welding up uh, Damascus billets. Uh, to keep brass or aluminum bright after you polish it, paint, clear enamel, Nova Man. That's the uh, that's my go-to for all my copper work. <laughs> you look at that. That's funny. Oh, all right. Well, I'm gonna get this. I'm gonna get this fire hot here, ladies and gents. Let's move you over so I can talk to you. That's a really severe light. There you go. You guys can still see me already. All right, let's muddle through this a little bit while we're waiting on Jess. I keep saying Jess, so hopefully she'll hear me and come out and start filming for me here. But So tonight we're going to start... We've already got one half of the jaws done. We did that to save on time. So now this is the other half of the jaws that we've got laid out and we're gonna go ahead and work out. These two center punch mark dots, they are just essentially to define where I wanna take and put my shoulders in at. Now if you notice, these reins don't taper all the way up into those. And the reason why is because when we do our set down of this material, we are wanting to put them right on them dots. So that's actually going to get stood up right on the edge of the anvil, so to speak. Well, the anvil will be this way. And then we'll hammer that down, and that'll create our proper shoulder in the right spot. So the nibs here, uh, I won't go over all the details, but I'll go over, put the inches here. So this is our tape measure. Upside down. There we go. So that's 2 inches or 50 mil. I hope that's 50 mil for anybody who's in the UK. Trying to do that. It's two inches in from the end here. That is laid off at a one inch or 25 mil. And then the reins were drawn out of the rest of the the rest of the material from the bar stock. This started once again as a 10 inch length of quarter inch thick by one inch wide flat stock. So that way everybody knows your knows the measurements. We're going to go ahead and get this hot in the fire. Anybody's doing that? I buy my stock from my for my tongs at the scrap yard there and uh, in Dayton, Ohio. Hey John McCann, yeah, definitely stop back. Bye. Thanks. Thank you, Graham. 25 mil by 6 mil by 250 mil. All right, we're going to get this broke up, get this fire going. Find my glasses, safety glasses. You can tell that that fire is getting good and hot. It's more flame than heat right now. Um, Mike Conley, it is First Street Recycling in Dayton. You can look them up. They do have a steel department. If you go to the place where they take in your scrap material, they won't sell you anything out of the actual scrap yard, but they have a, a separate yard, a steel yard, where you can buy new steel and scrap steel from just right down the way from them. Just ask them about it and they'll point you to it. So we got 68 people here. It's bouncing between 70 uh, people and 68 people, 35 likes. Good to have everyone here. <laughs> yep, 
Yeah, buddy, you're going to have that a lot. That's why I just start charging, and then people stop asking, except for the ones that are really serious that want stuff from you. Yeah, First Street Recycling in Dayton. John's seen me there before. I'm a regular, so. Hey there, Paul. Good to have you here, buddy. Charles Walker. Howdy. From Dayton, Ohio. He was from Texas. I'm from Ohio. Just saying, hey. Oh. <laughs> yep, Tom. Time is money. Alright, then get this fire dressed here a little bit better. Hey Aaron Skelton, hope that baby gets better for you, gets to feeling better. You have a good evening there, and yeah, definitely catch it on the replay. Material good and hot here. That looks like it's a ball of fire, but it's really not. It's just a bunch of flames dancing off the top from some green coal. So, hey, Jason Boldezir, thank you. I'm glad you enjoy the channel. All right. So I'm gonna try to take and flip the camera around, aiming at the anvil, and we're going to take and do our first step here. So, if you guys just bear with me for a second. Now, I won't be able to answer questions while this is flipped around here, guys, but I'm going to try to get you close to the anvil so you can see what's going on. And then I'll answer questions as I can. That's some really harsh lighting. All right. Yeah, buddy, you just have to take your time, buddy. Just decide to do it. Don't complicate it. It's the best I can do. Tech Run Matt, good to have you here. Let's see here. Do you guys think that's close enough for you? Or do you want me to try to get you closer? I think that'll be close enough. I think you're good enough on the level here. Okay, all good. So we're going to come to the near side of the anvil. This is our rivet for later. And we're going to create our very first set down. So to do these tongs, they're fairly simple. We're just going to find our 2 inch mark, or 50 mil mark. Use half on, half off blows. And we're just wanting to squat this material down. Nice and even. Alright, so that's as far as we're going to go in that first heat there. So that there should be, to measure it, so that's right at two and a half inches. We want to draw this to just a little over, just around three inches long. We're going to draw that down to about three inches long. This here is a good thickness, that's about a half inch thick or half the parent bar. So we're going to dress out the thickness of this a little bit and then re-thicken it up here to pull it out that extra half an inch. So let me get this hot real quick. Tech 
Thank you all for a ride. Now you can see me again. My big, big, beautiful, ugly face. Let's get this set up here. There we go. Hope everybody enjoys that. Flip it around. You guys ought to bear with me. I'm doing this alone so far tonight. My wife will show up soon. Now I can answer questions. Let's see here. Maybe angle a little left to catch the forge. I'll try to do that next one. Yeah, the anvil is very beautiful. <laughs> you can feel the heat from here. <laughs> That's funny. Hey, Gerald Cop. Good to go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for the kind words. It was nice meeting you all. We were there as well. At Quad State. Quad State was a... Quad State was a lot of fun. <laughs> Jackson Graham. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to tell her you said that. That would be a good one. That would be a good one. Tell her not to be late again. She's been late three times in my life. If anybody gets that joke. All right, so if anybody's watching this video and you care to share this uh, live stream with anybody, me and Jess greatly appreciate it. Uh, we appreciate it as much as possible. <laughs> you see what I did there? Hey, Jackson Graham, start it. Start it. I'm just, uh, I'm just finishing it. I'm adding to it. There we go. So. So one of the things I want to talk a little bit about while I've got this good and hot, while we're getting this thing heated up, so you guys can see the forge a little bit here. Um, one of the things I want to take and talk about is heat control. It's very important that you get your heat where you want it and not where you don't. So, so for instance, I'm trying to aim most of my heat on the tong jaws themselves. I do not want to heat back on the handle or the reins and the boss area a bunch. Because we're not wanting to take and get that to bend and go goofy and crooked and everything else while we're trying to work on specifically the jaws. Now, if you have a gas forge, this is a little this is a little more difficult to do. Obviously, um, if your whole jaw is completely hot, you can always cool off the boss and rain area a little bit if you need to. Oh, you started something there, Jackson. Yeah, man. Women are never late. Just a different time clock than we do. You know that's right. Happy wife, happy life. That's for sure. Hey, Benny Hoskins. Hello from Ohio. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh. Hey, Dave. Hey, Digger Blades. I think it's Digger. I'm not sure. Good to have you here. All right. So we got this good and hot. I'm going to flip it back around again. And we are going to go ahead and stretch it out the rest of the way. So I'm going to take you on a little ride here. I'm going to get it adjusted. It's going to look real awkward and weird for a second. See that finger? <laughs> Flip it around. All right, Jessica finally made it. Oh my God, praise the Lord. Can I get an amen and a hallelujah? Sorry, I'm running late, guys. <laughs> You're being poked. Yeah, what is up with that on... on uh, I don't know if that's a Facebook reference there, Paul's Garage, but that's funny. Awesome, BJ Waters. Thank you for sharing. So, all right, we're going to work on these nibs now that Jessica's in the house. Say hi, Jess. Hello. <laughs> all right, so we're going to continue to draw this out a little bit. As you can see, I got the boss area heated up a little more.
That's not a huge deal. All right, I got a little bit of catalumpus here. I'm just gonna dress that out a little bit. It's no big deal. At every stage during forging a pair of tongs, always go back to the immediate shoulder that you were at before. Whether you gotta be over here, whether you gotta be over here, if you did an offset, always remember that step of wherever you were at on the anvil to do whichever part. That will help you keep your tongs consistent. So, we start with two inches or 50 mil, and we are just a fudge shy, about an eighth inch shy of three inches. So we will go ahead and do one last heat on it. That will be good to go. All right. Good you can evening. <laughs> Everybody's saying hi. So um, hi. You can adjust the <laughs> okay. camera. However I need to. Yeah. yeah. There we go. BJ Waters says the dreaded rhombus. Yes, the dreaded rhombus. I think Alex Steele just made a video on that not too long ago. Uh-huh. He did a pretty good job on that video, I thought. Of course, he talks really fast, so unless you were really acute to what he was saying, it might have flew right on by you. I call it the cattywampus. <laughs> I call it getting cattywampus. Just your blade says that you make tongue looking tongue making look easy. Well, thank you. Uh, I do try. I do try. Let me move this over. And FFC. Rick says how to know what size hand crank blower is needed. Um, let's see here. This is a Champion 400, so I can recommend it. I think most of them come in Champion 400s and Champion 600. Well, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, Champion 400. I think they make a Champion 600 out there. Might be wrong on that. But, uh... Unless they have a, C, a CFM rating or a cubic foot a minute of airflow that they can push, uh, it's really hard to determine, especially on old blowers. It was just however well built they were. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Um, Bill Ball says hello from Laughing Bear Forge. Hey, Laughing Bear Forge. Bill Ball, good to have you here. Let's see. Mark C said, or Mark S said, never can have too many tongs. Exactly. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's go to the anvil here. I'm gonna stretch it out this last little bit. Alrighty. Okay. I'm going real light with my blows. I don't need to have this go real far. We don't want to bypass our three-inch mark. I'm eyeballing this. We're estimating it. I was accused of earlier this week that estimation isn't a product of a skilled smith. I beg to differ. So there we are at 75 mil. Oh my gosh, that was an estimation. <laughs> I guess I might be somewhat skilled at making tongs. There you go. Or estimating. <laughs> How about them apples? All right, that's enough of my rant. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so there we are. So we got that bit done. So now for the next step, we are going to go ahead and bend the jaw, the nib portion, the part that will actually bite the material. This portion right here. Now I use about a half inch of material. I think that's what, 12.5 mil, something like that. For those in the other parts of the UK, Graham, you can give them all the measurements that I screw up. <laughs> but yeah, so we're just going to bend this portion out next, and that'll be on the far side of the anvil. You can adjust the camera. All right. All right, Te questions? Yep, Techronmatic. Roy, how is the homemade, homemade bearing going on the power hammer? Homemade bearing is great. So... Always my homemade bearings, they last. So 
They're made out of one inch mild steel uh, bearings, if you will, if you want to call them bearings. Essentially, they're pieces of one inch rod cut off exactly one inch, one inch thick. So they're one inch diameter rod cut off at exactly one inch thick. And that's put on a solid steel cam and it's with a solid steel outer shell. And then they're greased real good. You're not going to wear them out in your lifetime. Well, they, have, they may have more slop in them, but since it's homemade, it's very easy to cut off a few tack welds off the cam sleeve and just replace them with some new low-cost one-inch rod. Oh, but yeah, they the, uh, so far with the homemade, the, the newest one, the beam hammer, I haven't ran it enough to even wear into them. And my other hammer that I made exactly the same way with the cam, I've had it in the shop now for two years and haven't had a problem one with them. So for two years worth. Mickey Swift, he says, Roy, are you going to have any more information on the class next weekend? Uh, let's see here. So you can find out more information on the class on sofablacksmiths.org's website. There should be, uh, you should be able to take and go over there and uh, Google that. Um, yeah, it's on the then, list under classes and workshops, and the class is sixty dollars. It's gonna be nine to from nine to five. Yep. And they're gonna be doing a forged candlestick. Yep. And it's November eleventh. Yep. Nine to five. Cost sixty bucks. Yep. And we will be doing the forged candle holder. I think there's still a few spots left in the class for anybody who wants to take it. I don't know if you can see that. Yep. I'm just holding it randomly. No, you're okay. good. You're in shot. So, all right. Good, good, good. All right. Chuck Howell, what is the make and weight of your anvil? Uh, so, the make of my anvil is a petting hoss anvil. It's supposed to be a North German anvil. I may be wrong on that. It's just what I was told. Petting hoss anvil is a North German anvil. And the weight is 465 pounds. Let's go to the anvil. All righty. Roll that beautiful bean footage, Duke. <laughs> All right, we're going to be here. We're going to be here. All right. You see me? Yeah. All right. Well, you're on there. So we're going to lay off about a half an inch, 12.5 mil, and we're going to forge that at about a 45 degree angle. Now, you can make this as long as you like. You don't have to make this exactly half inch. There's no need in making this any longer than the half inch of material laid off as described. And there we go. Just kind of a nice clean 45 degree angle is what we're wanting on that. So now so now we are going to heat up this area right in here, right here at the boss, and we're going to bend it down at almost a 45 degree angle or the same angle as you see that set down there. Somebody had a question on the power hammer there, huh? Yes. They said they recently bought, let's see, let me go back to it, Noble Keys. I, I appreciate your channel. I recently purchased your plans for the power hammer that attaches to the anvil, but the new beam hammer looks intriguing. How would you compare the two? Uh, there's not a comparison point. Can you turn it up here? Yep. Sure I'm can. up here. There we go. <laughs> All right. Um, so, comparison between the hardy hammer, the anvil mounted, and the beam hammer. Hopefully I'm not looking weird and shot. You're fine. Am I looking good? No, you're fine. Had to okay. Show. All right. Uh, so, there's really not a comparison point. So, the hardy hammer I built to be a portable hammer that can attach to an anvil s surface and it was really designed to really work with tooling. So working with top tools, things like that, um, and kind of replace the need for a step hammer, so to speak. Uh, working with the tooling bracket on the revisited design of it, uh, it can draw out material very effectively, but it was meant to be a lightweight portable hammer. So therefore, it only has a 12 pound ram. The beam hammer has a 37 pound ram, it's four foot long, or it's actually 49 inches overall long, and about 11 inches wide, so it takes up considerable space in the shop. And it's adjustable to work with tooling. It's been designed to work with tooling, but it's a completely different beast. The thing weighs about 350 pounds. You're not going to take and move the thing 
very easily or be very portable. So it's completely different designs. I hope that answers the question. Uh, the Hardy Hammer is a great option for somebody who has a very small shop space and you know you just have your anvil you know and you don't want to invest into a thousand pounds worth of steel or if you can't make a large enough area for fitting in the beam hammer in your shop. So the Hardy Hammer is a great option for that. Hopefully I answered the question good enough. Mm -hmm. You can let me know if I answer the question good or not. Mark S. to answer your question, this is our regular camera that we shoot our live streams with, but I'm glad it looks more clear. Last week it was stormy, so that might have affected the quality. Yep. All right, I'm ready to bend this. All right. We're going to do a 45 degree angle. Far side of the anvil again. Setting it here. careful not to forge this area too thin. We're just getting that adjusted. Like I said, about a 45 degree angle. Now you're going to see this little notch here, how it's kind of right in there where that set down was, where that sharp set down was. That is going to get dressed up whenever we dress up the boss area. So no need in worrying about that at this point in time. You don't want to get this area. This joint here is the most prone to snapping or breaking off or bending or weakening this joint area in here too much will cause you major problems down the road. So you want to keep this as thick as you can get here. So we will go ahead now and we will bend this into our shape, into our jaw shape, get this aligned, and then we will do our set down and adjust the boss area. Questions? All right, to answer some questions, did your blades, yes, our live shows are always gonna be at 7 p.m. Eastern time. That's just for our kids so we can get them to bed on time. Hi, John. Let's see here. Uh, James Brasher says, Roy, you're a modern day renaissance man. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means, but I appreciate that. Thank you. Nova Man says, they say that roofers roof, roofers roofs leak, mechanics cars don't run. Do you ever blacksmith things for yourself? No. <laughs> I got on to him the other day. He bought some handles from Lowe's or Home Depot. And I'm like, why are you buying handles? And he's like, it's just easier. It's easier than me having to make them. I know. I know. I went all sacrilegious there for a second. <laughs> Mickey asked if the class is going to be more of a demonstration or will be hands-on. The class is all hands-on. So you'll be working at a forge. You will be making your own candle holder. And I will be doing demonstrations throughout the day of the different parts and elements. And then I go to each individual student and I help you forge your candle holder. And when I say help, that doesn't mean I like take over and I forge it for you. I let you forge it and I tell you everything you're doing wrong. <laughs> you get critiqued. <laughs> you get critiqued. Hey, that's a that's an interesting format. I'm the one used to being critiqued online, so There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. There had been some comments about your anvil asking if it was a German pattern anvil. Yep, it's a German double horn anvil. What else we got? Let's see, Golden Comedy, would it be possible to make a ping pong set? Ping pong set. Imagine yeah. you could. The ball wouldn't bounce too good, I wouldn't Yeah, think, the ball but... wouldn't bounce very well. <laughs> but it'd be funny. Let's see, somebody asked if you'll be making a Thor hammer in the future? I intend to. Now actually, just to kind of give you a little sneak snippet, the Thor hammer I plan on making is going to be life size and be realistic. So uh, most people when they make them, they fabricate them, they make them out of hollow plate. Man at Arms did it like that. A lot of the fantasy guys that like doing those sort of things, uh, they do it all out of you know whatever they can get their hands on. I believe it ought to be made out made like a hammer. So I plan on making it out of a solid chunk. 
be looking for that video in the future. Hot Iron Forge says, favorite hammer style. Favorite hammer style. That would be this German pattern hammer style that I made in class with Tom Lapney. That's my favorite. It's a square face. Everything's square on it. It allows me to get right into corners and offsets, and I use that a lot in my work, my line of work. So, all right, I'm ready to go to the anvil. Okay. We're gonna. I'm gonna use a bic. It just drops in the hardy hole. This happens to be a one inch bic. And we're gonna hammer on the jaw itself. And adjust that on around. And just tighten that right on up. So all we're doing is just trying to get this lined up here. It's kind of hard to do this in demonstration format. It's easier to do this when you are all by yourself in the shop because you don't have to worry about camera angles and people being able to see what you're doing. So I got a little bit of work to dress that up when I dress the boss out, but you can see how that's looking now. So all we did was bend that around. So if you want these both to look alike, you need to take and have something that you can bend around that has the same pitch. If you do it on the horn, it's a little more difficult. You can just chalk mark it wherever you bent the radius so you know where to find it again. Any questions on that? Let's see. While we're waiting on questions come in on that, uh, Herb Page says, I'm building a tiny home and finally going to forge items for myself for the place. That's awesome. Did your blade says I am coming to Ohio for a wedding next year. How do you feel about a visitor? I feel just fine by a visitor as long as I can get a call ahead. So I had a guy who wanted to come out and visit. Uh, and then he just kind of like said, hey, I'm in the area and I just want to drop by. And I was nowhere close to being ready to have any sort of visitors. I was out. I was taking care of my business. Um, so uh, he would came through the area and he sadly had to go and go back to where he once he came. I forget how far he had traveled, but uh, I forget where he went to, but it was a long ways away. Mm -hmm. I think it was Minnesota or something. He was coming from Minnesota or going back to Minnesota, I think. I'm not sure. Yeah. But anyways, so we had a missed opportunity there. So the best way to do is, you know, to get a hold of me and see when I'm going to be around. Mm -hmm. And if I can make a special guest appearance, yeah. I will do that. <laughs> or try to make uh, it to one of the Or the best way or is, to get a, is to come to one of the events I'm either teaching at or I'm demonstrating at, usually at SOFA. Matthew Ben says, why double horns? Why double horns? Why not double horns? <laughs> I enjoy double horn anvils. The reason why is they... They help you with certain reach issues, like down here on the square horn itself. This is just a tapering faceplate, really. It's not really a horn. It's, it is a horn, but the handiness of it is not like the radius of that horn. It just helps you get in between two shoulders or narrow spaces on your forging that you can't do on the face of the animal. Yep. We are located in the Dayton, Ohio area. Oh. Len Blacksmith said, is the nib supposed to be in line with the reins? Yep, you want them exactly in line. Uh, what's, what you're going to do at the end of these, and this is where I keep out overcomplication, what you're going to do at the end of these, when you set these up, hopefully I'm in shot. Yep, you good? Are. You're going to heat these and you're going to bend one towards it, each other and one to the other one. So they're just going to kind of... You're just going to line them up a little bit, so this way they'll line up. But there's no need in doing that. You'll see uh, other tong styles where you have to forge in the offset for the boss to get the reins. To, you know, to get the to get the 
jaws to line up perfectly, that's not necessary in this style of tong. All right, good and hot. Okay, ready? There you go, we're gonna be going to the far side of the anvil again. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and put our set down, right on our marks, half on, half off blows, and dress that material back into our reins. And now we're gonna just go ahead and hammer and take off that corner. If you wanna see why I like this hammer so much, look right there, I'm scorching the top of it. I can get in at these little sharp corners where you can't get that with a hammer with a round face, a rounding hammer, or anything like that. You just can't get that same reach, same amount of reach. I'm going to adjust this, this bent up a little bit extra than what I was wanting. Adjust that again. Just adjusting that. Not as happy with that jaw area, but that's okay. We're going to live with it. It's good enough for giveaway tongs. As long as they hold the material and don't look too ugly, you guys should be okay with them. So there we go. We got one half done already. So the next part here, we're going to go ahead and put our split in them. And then they get flipped over and put together and adjusted. So as you can see, I got like a flat in there. I don't like that flat. I'd like to adjust that out of that. We'll have to see once we get this together. But I mean, that's my only gripe with these pairs so far. Other than that, I mean, they're pretty much fitting together nice. So we'll see about that. Heat it up again? Yep. BJ Waters says, do you have a full schedule of classes? I'm in Northwest Indiana and would gladly drive the 300 plus miles to take a class of yours. Well, that is, that is very nice to hear. Uh, I do not have a set uh, class schedule. I would love to have a set class schedule, but that's not usually how they work it at SOFA as they have other demonstrators, they have other teachers that they like to try to get classes in on. Uh, so the best I can do is announce it in live streams and do it about a month or two in advance. This one was fairly short turnaround because another guy had to bail out on the class schedule so there was an opening and they needed a filling. They need somebody to fill the spot so I filled that spot. Um, the next one won't be until February though of 2018. That won't be, that'll be the next class. And that will be doing forced air burners, gas forge burners, if we get enough interest, if there's enough people that want to take and take the class. Dan Boyle said, Roy, do you ever teach at your forge or only at SOFA events? Right now, because of insurance purposes, I only teach at SOFA events. So where I'm set at, I rent my house and my shop from my landlord. So. I have to be very careful about how having other people out to my forge. Hopefully that answers that question. I would love to teach in person and eventually maybe open up uh, to be able to have classes here at whenever I buy a house someday. What are your favorite beginner's blacksmithing projects? I made a lot of hooks but I failed at any attempts making tongs or candlesticks. Favorite beginning blacksmith projects. Um, hooks are the main thing that you can do. I would say if you are a beginner and you're failing at tongs and you want to take and progress, you need to go back and learn more of your basics. Practice just fundamentals. So things like bottle openers is a good way of learning how to do uh, slitting and drifting. Uh, forging your own tooling is a good way, like learning how to make your own uh, slit chisels, slot punches, round punches, 
learning the heat treating and things of those. Those are all very basic methods that you have to do, but then they can help you progress and make more and more tooling, learn how to make a drift. I have several videos on the channel of all these things that I'm talking about from a round punch to a slitting chisel to slot punches to drifts. Uh, I would reference those videos and other videos on YouTube and then that should help you progress enough that you can tackle more and more complex projects. I hope that answers it pretty well. Manga12 said, so you don't just let people stop by, that is if people want to just watch you work. If people just want to watch me work, I like I said, I'm a fairly busy guy. I work 60 hours a week plus 20 hours doing YouTube. Uh, and then there's probably an additional 10 to 15 hours in there somewhere of editing and things like that. So I'm a pretty busy guy, but I always enjoy having somebody out to visit. So if somebody wanted to come out and just visit me, uh, as long as they gave me a, like, ske scheduled that out with me, I'd be perfectly okay with somebody coming out and visiting for the day. I just, as far as accepting money and teaching a class, there's a whole nother dynamic of liability waivers, uh, insurance, things like that, that I'm not ready to get into yet uh, with my own forge and company just yet. All right, you yep. ready? Mm -hmm. All right, we're gonna go to the anvil. So just like in my videos earlier this week, we're going to find our center on this point and we're just going to cut ourselves a little notch right in the center of these tong jaws. Make sure it's in the center if you can. Is this close enough that people can actually see something? Honey? Let me see if I can make that a little better. So, hopefully you guys can see. Well, you guys can't see. You're too far out. It's okay. I'll bring it up to you to see what I'm doing here. All right. So there we go. We just split that down the center. And like I said in the video that I did on this, you just cut down a little bit to relieve that back edge so the bar stock can fit through there. So that half of the jaws are done. Or is done. Not are done. <laughs> I'm showing my redneck there. So now that half's done, the only thing that's left is to go ahead and drill these then and uh, put the rivet through and do the rivet work. So we're going to take a little short, so we're going to take a little short break and do our giveaway now. Yeah, I brought if, the names if out. If everybody's excited about that. Who's ready for a giveaway? <laughs> Let us know. Do we have a consensus? We got a yes. You have one yes. <laughs> BTB says back just in time. <laughs> back just in time. Good timing. Good timing, Bodie. Yep. Bodie didn't have to listen to all my yammering. Hmm. All right. Are they actually looking at something worthwhile I, or no, just my rear just end? Staring at the anvil. All know. right, they're just staring at the anvil. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we're gonna flip them around here in a second. I'm gonna get a few other tools gathered for the rivets. All right. Right back. Let's see. While he's gathering his tools, Graham, to answer your question about the award money, we're actually saving up right now for a house and a shop, so we haven't spent it on anything yet. Nope, we are very, we are very big into saving. So, uh, what would mean more to me than anything in the world is to be able to take and own a home uh, and a shop of my own. To have a shop and to have a home and to be able to go to that next stage and be able to offer blacksmith classes at my shop and things like that and weekend workshops and be able to do the teaching thing. I really enjoy that. So that's one of my hopes and goals. Uh, every, every dollar that you know we receive that's not tied down right now, we're doing our best to save it for that eventual goal and hopefully the Lord will bless us in the future with it. So. You can be a small part in that by buying a beam hammer plan. There's a shameless plug or a t-shirt. www.teespring.com forward slash beam hammer. Beam hammer. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm not no good at sales, but there we are. So let's flip this around. Right. Come around here. We're going to. All right, guys. Yeah, there it is. She's pretty. She's beautiful. She's bolded. That video will be coming out right after this one, guys and gals 
Sorry I don't say gals enough. I just count everybody else as a brotherhood of blacksmithing. No matter what your age, race, sex, religion, doesn't matter. I consider you a brother in smithing. Well, thank you for the prayers for the home. Just what you got going on here with the legs. Did I do something? Mm, something's crooked. Oh. Let's see here. You've adjusted something down crooked, okay. but that's all right. We'll do it here. We're good. Okay. We are good. All right. Let's just do this. Okay. There's a bunch of guy names um, this time. A bunch of names this yeah. time for the giveaway. So we're really excited about that. I think it's nearly 100 or something. So, all right. Oh, hold on, let me answer this one real quick. Okay. Eric French said, Hi, is this the Beam Hammer giveaway? He said Graham Pepper. No, not the Beam Hammer giveaway. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Eric French, yeah, uh, I didn't get the correct pulley. What I did to stop it from slipping is I drilled a hole all the way through it and I bolted it. And uh, so that worked too. And so far it's holding up. The correct pulley on the plans will be on the plans or on the document sheet that we're putting with it that has a link to it that you can go to. And it actually has a steel cast steel pulley, I think it is. And we still need to locate it. I couldn't find one exactly. Oh, you can like find the cast steel about. one. It's like $500, guys. So yeah, we're not doing that. So. Um, for you. so one of the options we'll put on the list is if it's not the cast iron and it's the one that I have, which is like a die cast material, I would just drill it and uh, put a bolt through it. So that's the answer on that. So. <laughs> Yeah, so you can't win, Bodhi. That's funny. So, all right. All right, drum roll. Yep, drum roll. We're not looking. She's okay. not looking. Oh She's not looking. Okay. Not, not looking. looking. Dirty hand in the face. Not looking. All right, let's see. I got one. The Primordial Geek. Primordial Geek. That's there funny to say. <laughs> primordial Geek is yep. the winner of the knife making tongs. Yep. So, bring these up. Congratulations, Primordial Geek. You've got 48 hours to claim your prize. Yep. If you don't, they'll be on the next live stream as an additional giveaway. <laughs> so you can send oh. us a message here on YouTube. Uh, just go yep. to the About Us page on our channel, and there's like a little place where you can message us. Or go yep. to blacksmithpdfs.com, and up in the right-hand corner, you will see the <laughs> Contact Us button. So what's the runner-up get says? <laughs> <laughs> the good feeling of knowing that you applied to win. That's what you get. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the last winner in the giveaway got scrolling tongs, right? That was, yes. Yep, yep. Yes, which we have so, to ship those out, yep. sorry. These are yours. We haven't forgot about you, JG Clark, 45. We haven't forgot about you. These are going in the mail first thing Monday. And we're gonna make sure if contacts the primordial geek is that what it is mm -hmm. the, i'm not being rude that's the guy's screen name or gal screen name if they contact within 48 hours they get these knife making tongs so there you go those two tongs will be out in the mail monday yep. and for all those that don't know the secret trick to getting entered to win is to be watching this video and listening to the for the secret passphrase that we always tell out that you put in the playback section of this video yep. after the video is released as a regular video and you'll get your chance to win these bolt jaw tongs that I made in a previous video this week. Very nice. Now, so, you, have, now you have to think of the secret catchphrase. Yeah, now we gotta think <laughs> of the secret catchphrase that everybody needs to say for the next giveaway. Oh, I wish, I wish I could make uh, tongs to give away to everybody in the uh, everybody in the blacksmithing community, but that's just not possible. So I do what I can. I hope it'll help people out. So yeah, it's not much of a secret. Everybody on the live stream knows what it is. So yeah, everybody on the live stream will get to know what it is. So tong to tong, tong tong. <laughs> yeah, Cisco is making a comeback. Uh, Scott McDermott. Uh, no, I do not make tongs. I do not make tongs. At this point. <laughs> At this point. I make them, I show you how to make them so you can hopefully make them yourself. They're just not lucrative enough of a business opportunity for me to, for me to make those full time. Uh, so maybe if I had a big drop hammer or something I could pound them out by the second, maybe, but uh, right now it'd be impossible for you to pay me my shop rate to make a pair of tongs. Mm -hmm. So I'd just rather give them away when I make them and, mm -hmm. and uh, give away tools that I make in videos. 
Uh, I, I'd rather do that than try to charge everybody. Well, hopefully that answers the question. Yep. What's the catchphrase? <laughs> gotta keep listening. <laughs> you gotta keep listening. This is how we keep you on the channel watching the live stream. So, all right, Jessica, talk for a second while I okay. get these drilled. Yes. It's the last three live streams. That's what he's done. Go on. Uh, is your drill press plugged in? I'll get it plugged in. You okay. just, all right. You just stall. That's your plan. Okay, let's see. I'll see. Look back and see if I can answer yeah. anybody's questions. Graham Pepper said that big Watch dog. You step for a moment. Oh, am I in your way? Okay. Nope. All I need was say... one punch, Mark. We're good to go. All right. Yeah, big dog uh, forge sells tongs sometimes. That's what Graham said. Yep, let's... he's on the men still from her shoulder. There we go. Okay. There. I think I'm settled. Let's see here. I believe we answered all the questions about Roy teaching a class. Um, he normally does that at SOFA uh, just from time to time. Normally it's through the cold months, so somewhere in like November through March, somewhere in there, he'll teach a couple of classes. And so far we don't have the exact dates for any of them yet, uh, just besides the one on November 11th doing the candlestick. So that's the one we have for sure right now. Um, let's see what else we have. Why don't we have one of our hoodies on? We just have ordered the t-shirt so far. We really need to get the hoodies ordered so that way really we really need to get the hoodies. <laughs> that way we can be warm out here because it is starting to get cooler. I am going to steal this electrical cord. Can't take it. Okay, hopefully it's got enough battery. I think it has enough battery. Sorry guys, shaking your around. All right, social media. Um, yes, we are on Instagram, instagram.com slash Christ Center and Ironworks. Uh, and yeah, we're actually doing a thing with the beam hammer. So for anybody who builds the beam hammer, they can use hashtag beam hammer and they can put that in with a photograph of like the build, like in the process or when it's finished and just kind of uh, just have a community going around it for whoever builds this. And again, we'll have the, like the t-shirts too um, so if you want to have a t-shirt and pose by your beam hammer when you get one built, that'll be cool. And then, you know, um, since we can't see photo photographs you guys post on YouTube, we can look at it that way through Instagram because we are on Instagram quite a bit. And then additionally, we have a Facebook page. Our Facebook is facebook.com slash Christ Centered Ironworks. And uh, a Kate, I post some stuff there and I share some videos and some updates. Roy isn't personally on it. If you guys send us a question through Facebook, I will bring it before Roy, but he's been taking a break from Facebook uh, for now. So, so yeah, pretty much Instagram and Facebook. We do have a Twitter too. And um, we don't do a lot with the Twitter. It pretty much shares our video links there. Uh, but besides that, we haven't been overly involved. Let's see here. Oh, it's sticking. Okay. Looking to get a building for a shop. Any suggestions for guys starting out, Thomas? Uh, well, a lot of people have kind of gone with the carport buildings or just like little yard sheds, and they kind of make that their first blacksmith building. Uh, Roy's first building was actually built out of pallets. Uh, he put stakes pallets and he built this um, little shack in the backyard and it was like something like six by ten and uh, it didn't even it it leaked and he got all his tools got splashed in the rain and everything but it worked to start out with and I think he was in that shop for about a year or two and then the shop we're in currently um, Roy worked with the landlord to build it and even this is some recycled materials but uh, you can really start out of, I mean, technically you don't even have to have a building to start blacksmithing. You can just start uh, with like a ground forge or, or pull your stuff out in the open under a tree. Roy did that too. <laughs> Bodie, if you gotta run, you can, bud. Why am I in the barn? Uh, I am out here to help. <laughs> I'm out here to 
I'll help with the live stream. I help read the comments. And She's been very, very bad. <laughs> so yeah, so if I was being punished. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm just out here to read comments and help film. And that way, Roy's not having to do it on his own. Like, like the, first the first 45 minutes? Yeah, exactly. All right. <laughs> but they survived it. So there's still 72 people hanging around. So Awesome. Glad to have everybody. So <laughs> glad to have everybody here. Oh. Get this thing rotated. All right. How do we rotate again? Is it this bottom huh? one with the circles? It's this no. one. Okay. Look at that big thumb. <laughs> There's the thumb. Okay. So like in every other tong video that I make, I've got my rivet cut to length. The rivet needs to stick out about one and a half times the diameter of the rivet. So if this is, I'm not going to do math. Not going to do math. J.G. <laughs> Clark, you're awesome on that. Thank you. She made a, made a comment about, uh, yeah, unspoken YouTube rule. Never do math on camera. Yeah. And 100% uh, correct on that. So essentially, it's just sticking out evenly both sides of the tongs here. There you go. And like I always point. do is I cold set these first. So I make sure the two halves are together. And then... I cold set the rivet. This is just a piece of standard 3/8 mild steel rod. So I cold set the rivets. Make sure your tong halves are staying together. You don't want to get any gap between them. That's going to mess you up later. So we're just going to make sure that's all together. We set the rivet cold. So now that the rivet is set cold, both tong halves are together. It got a little off to one side, but that's okay. Now that both tong halves are together, we will heat this back up, the whole thing, and we will go to our rivet set tool that I also made in a video. It's a riveting series. Very riveting. Anyways, uh, <laughs> Excuse the puns. So that right there will take and make the domed heads that you see on the tongs for the ribs. I guess that sure is. <laughs> <laughs> glad somebody gets your hum humor. <laughs> I'm glad somebody finds me amusing. All right. So if you're just tuning into the live stream or if you've been here a while, make sure you share this live stream around. Oh. Here we go. I get the fire going. Yep, got to get this fire up and going here. Alright, any questions? Comments? Let's see. Funnies? Uh, BJ Water says, God created man, then whoa man, then the carpenter. Then he created the blacksmith to make all the tools for the carpenters and correct all of the carpenters' mistakes. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> what else? Let's see here. Uh, Herb Page, I like blacksmith puns. I use them all the time. Oh yeah. Like, don't lose your temper. <laughs> or that's riveting. Chuck Howell, you glad to have us, but we are really glad to have you. Well, I'm glad to hear that. That does, I can't, well, I'll focus for a second. I'm really glad to hear that. Thank you so much for that. That's, I, I, uh, I love hearing those type comments. Of course, anybody would. You know, those, uh, that's what I like on YouTube. This community that we got here. Mitchell Scripter says, don't put cinnamon in the ground beef. Doesn't turn out too well. <laughs> Thanks, Mitchell. I could probably use some cooking advice after you guys heard Roy's story on my yep. uh, ketchup spaghetti last time. <laughs> and I'm sorry we're so distracting that you put cinnamon in your ground beef. <laughs> I'm not sure what you were going for there, but cinnamon has a distinct odor, flavor, and generalized texture and color. Just uh -huh. saying. <laughs> Mickey asked if you're ever going to put any of your work on DVD. I hope to someday. Uh, might do a collection of things. 
if I do something for a DVD, I would want it to be uh, very well done, professionally shot. I could sit, I'm not really a professional film, film, filmer, filmographer, or whatever. Videographer. Would, videographer, mm -hmm. there we go. I wouldn't, I would want it to be professionally done, easy to follow, none of my weird jargon, and very <laughs> straight and to the point, so this way it would be the best benefit for the, the viewer. Nobody wants to listen to a guy for an hour and a half ramble. Well, except for it just, whoever's on these it live streams. just turned an hour and a half, as you said <laughs> that. So <laughs> there's 68 people who care to. <laughs> hey, glad to have all 68 of them. Okay. I'm gonna try to get this up hot. The biggest trick to this, when you're heating up these tong jaws, go slow in the fire. You do not want to try to take and just rush this because what'll happen is. Before that rivet gets hot, you'll burn the jaws off the tongs. So take your time, let it all come up to heat. Plus, it gives you the chance to gab. <laughs> What's up? Uh, Robert Poglitch. Hello, just got here. Robert, good to have you here, buddy. I'm glad you were able to make it. Quick snapshot, we are making tongs, if you haven't heard. Yep, we are making a pair of bolt jaw tongs that will be giving away a secret catchphrase that you can comment on the playback of this video. And you know what, we're close enough to having these done. Maybe we should think about that, uh, what the word should be. Oh yeah. Let's see, you said they're bolt head tongs? Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. I've lost my bolts. Everybody likes nuts. The bolt. <laughs> Never mind. sorry. That, I, that one came out bad. You know, <laughs> the bolt kind. <laughs> Thomas Jewell says catchphrase, hold that hot bolt. Hold that hot bolt. There we go. We can do that. Just turn it over, get it getting hot. <laughs> <laughs> Graham says LOL. Yeah, Jessica had like the biggest laughing smile expression on her face. You can't see her on camera. <laughs> I was holding it in. But she was she was blushing on that one. That one was that was a little bad. Um, let's hear. Let's see. I don't make knives from bolts. <laughs> I don't make knives from <laughs> bolts. There you go. Robert Poglitch, uh, hashtag big mouth tongs. Big mouth tongs. Mm-hmm. Hmm. That was a possibility. Here's one. Got to bolt. Manga 12. Got to bolt. That one's got a nice little ring to it. That one might be it. Let's see here. Sarah and Mike says you're a nut. How can we not <laughs> use that one? There you go. Who would say you're a nut? I thought they'd all say that. <laughs> How, let's have a vote. Who says you're a nut should be the catchphrase. <laughs> Manga 12 says, I have a way with words. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny is people are going to come back to like the playbacks and they're not going to watch the video for like any length of time to get any context to this. You're know, like, man, this guy's got a lot of hate coming to him. You know, everybody's calling him, you're a nut. I like that. That's what we're going to use. Okay. Yeah, we got about six thumbs up. And six thumbs yeah. up on that. All yep. right. So, on the playback of this video, how you'll get entered in to win these bolt jaw tongs, is say, you're a nut. All right. Everybody knows. We'll go that route. All right. So, before these get burned up, they're hot enough. All right. Let's go ahead. To the anvil? Yep, to the anvil. I'm going to protect my burn on my hand. Yeah, that's a good idea. With the exact thing that caused me to get a burn in the first place. Gloves. My gloves. You know. Kind of a bit of an oxymoron. Well, just kind of a moron, really. Kind of a moronic thing to be doing. So there's really not a whole big ordeal with this. You just want to make sure that it stays in your bottom bolster block and that you're hitting squarely. And it should drive the rivet down nice and round. Take nice big blows with it. Make sure it's in the bolster block. Do not make the mistake of letting it come up on the flat or go into one of the other bolsters. 
and you'll do just fine with this process. Make sure they're driven tight together. All right. Those are together, man. I'm liking these. You liking these? Mm-hmm. Peter, to answer your question, the Primordial Geek won the tongs this time. Yep. He won the knife-making tongs. So, all right, so now we got that bolt all together. You can see how well and professional that makes that look. There you go, there you go. So now the next point is to go ahead and align these jaws. We're just gonna heat this up and just give them a little tap in each direction to line them up. And then we will adjust them to fit the stock size that we're looking for. But those are pretty much together. And we gotta adjust them, you know, where they open and close freely and everything like that. So let's get it hot again and do that. Alrighty. If you're just joining, welcome. We are yep. making tongs. Air bolt jaw tongs. Mm -hmm. That we'll be giving away a next Friday night's live stream. And the catchphrase is? You're a nut. That's right. <laughs> Not you're a nut, I'm a nut. That kind of thing. <laughs> you're, you're saying I'm a nut. Tomato, tomato. I don't tomato, know. Tomato, tomato. Maybe we're all nuts together. Yeah. <laughs> John Woods said, my wife just saw the tongs and said, oh, those are pretty. Well, thank you, John Woods, John Woods' wife. <laughs> Let's see. There is a question about your anvil stand. Uh, the base okay. for your anvil. Let me turn a little bit and so I can look at it for you. Okay. Let's see. BJ Waters. We actually did a video on this one. Yep. And there we go. On my anvil stand, Bill? Yep. It's a three-legged anvil stand. Um... Type in Anvil Stand Chrysler Ironworks on YouTube, and it'll pull up our search result there, or now, find it in our playlist. Yeah, now the anvil stand I did in the video was not this particular anvil stand. Uh, it was another anvil stand for a buddy of mine, and, uh, you know, it's made out of a solid chunk of steel here. This is a two-inch thick piece of steel, and this is happens to be a big one. This anvil stand weighs 350 pounds. So the anvil stand here is a pretty heavy anvil stand for to hold up a 465 pound anvil. These here are just quarter by one inch flat stock uh, pieces of bar bent to create a slot for one inch tooling for the hardy hole to be able to just drop in at random. I like having, since I do a lot of work, I do, uh, since I'm doing it professionally, I like having everything at a moment's notice to go in the anvil. Just like so. And then I've got a few vice related tools up here, but that's just because I'm lazy and haven't made a tool uh, hanger for them yet. Yeah, and I we have plans for that also on blacksmith PDFs. I think it's four dollars and it has the different... Um... Yeah, it's got like different heights uh, it has in the plans over at Blacksmith PDFs that I sell plans for the anvil stand itself. It already has like preset height. So like if you're a certain height person, the anvil stand should be such height given a dimension on an anvil as a formula. Manga 12 says, does that weight of the anvil make a difference? Like, do you notice a difference? What, with 465 pound anvil? Versus a smaller one, yeah. Uh, yeah, it makes a big difference. So, an anvil's rebound and everything else about the amount of work you can get done underneath it and or on top of it and things like that all comes down to its mass. Or, more correctly, the amount of mass that is under your hammer blow. So in a German pattern, you've got a lot of mass directly centered under your hammer blow and obviously a lot of thickness this way. And so that really does help uh, with not absorbing so much energy and transferring that energy back to the material. If you got a little small anvil, something like this, and you're hitting it with a hammer this big, can you work material? Yes, you can, but, but since it's such a small, amount of mass, 
you're going to move a lot less material for the same amount of time. Corey says, Roy, does it really make a difference which side of the anvil you stand on to forge? It does not. The Where I will say that I like my anvils and the way I set up my anvils, and I did a video on this as well, and I did a very in-depth look at it with my opinion on that, I always smith with the hardy hole to the left. So whatever that is on your anvil, I always smith with the hardy hole to the left, because if you're a right-handed smith, and you swing with your right hand, if the hardy holds to the left and you forget your hardy tool on the anvil and you're going to smith on something, you're in nowhere, shape, or form a danger of hitting that hardy tool. So I always smith with the hardy hold to the left. It's really a personal preference thing. There we go. Yep. Night, Mickey. Thanks for stopping in. Yeah. All right. So uh, I'm going to adjust these to hold a piece of 3 8 square. Four. Not for any particular reason other than to just adjust them. Are we ready? Yep, we're ready. Okay, let's go over to the anvil. Alright. Should have had a piece of 3 8 square already cut off, but I didn't. So we're just going to adjust these old naturel like. So to adjust these, we're going to hold the boss in the rivet over to the off side of the anvil. We're just going to tap the jaws over and line them up. Just like that. Nice and light work. We don't want to go real heavy with this. And then I'm going to put these three, I'm going to put this 3 8 inch material in here. Give my tong handles a squeeze. And that's going to help line, that's going to help get the right grip. Can they see that? Yep. That's going to get the right grip. And then I'm also going to go ahead and square up the nibs at this point. And that'll hold them directly in line, just like so. So there you have it. So now the next part, let's go ahead and heat these back up. We'll go over the vise. We'll shift this a little bit to get these to center up a little better. And then free them up and we'll be done. All right, there's some questions about your preference for, uh, let's see, Manga 12, do you prefer cranking as therapy? Oh, on the hammer? The, uh, yeah, on the blower. The blower? Uh, I wouldn't say it's therapeutic. Uh, I just enjoy hand crank forges. I get a little more nostalgia out of it, and, you know, I can control the airflow pretty well with a hand crank forge. Oh, I'm going to have to adjust my vice real quick. Must be Graham, 3 8 inch, inch is 9.5 millimeters. Thank okay. you, Graham, for that. Let's see, BJ Waters, hey, it is so awesome that you and your wife do this together. My wife and I are watching and really enjoying. Oh, we're so glad to hear that. Scott, thanks for stopping in. Have a great evening. Yeah. Oh, by the way, before, any, before too many people jump off, there will be a video of the beam hammer being released right after this video is over. And you got to make sure that you comment in the comment section after this video is uh, fully released in the playback mode of You're a Nut to get entered to win the Bolt Jaw Tongs mm -hmm. um, in next week's live stream. Just want to put that out there again for anybody who needs to leave so you don't feel left out of that. In the, in the power hammer plans for the beam hammer, they are done and they will be live and at the ready after this live stream concludes, correct? Mm -hmm. Yes, I'll okay. go. When you're nearly done, I'll go do that. Alrighty. See, there is a so, question about the tongs. Rep says, since you can adjust to fit different sizes, can you use one set and keep adjusting each time you change to a different size? If so, is there a limit on how many times? You can do that. It's not advisable. So. Every time, so every time that you put the steel back in the fire, you realign its grain structure just a little bit. So every time you bring it up to a forging heat, 
you, you are doing something to the grain. It's not staying a constant. So it's not as simple as just bending it. It's kind of like if you took a coat hanger and you bend it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Eventually it snaps. Well, you can do that with hot steel still. If So many times it takes longer with hot steel, but eventually it will fail on you. And so if you've got like an hour and so into tongs, it's just better to go ahead and make a new set of tongs each size versus to take and have to constantly be changing between them. As far as a failure point, I would say maybe, I don't know, I'll, I'll just put an ash, I'll put a number on there maybe 50 times. I don't know, it's probably sooner than that before they would fail. Not advisable, <laughs> especially if you spend a lot of time in them. Okay, we ready to go with vice? Oh, vice, yes. Yep. Okay. The vice. The vice. Hmm. Okay. Get these. I'll go. Right here. Okay. Just put it into this end of the vice. Sorry, guys. You are totally in the way. There we go. All right, just clamping that in. And this is where we're going to do any final tweaking, adjusting, getting things squared up, pushing the material around, getting our reins aligned, just using that vise to hold it. I think that looks pretty good there. I think that's, I think that's going to make somebody a very happy owner of tongs. There, so I'm going to take these off. We're going to go ahead and give them a brushing and clean them up. Now everything's aligned, everything's good in that respect, but the next thing you're going to have to do is as this cools, you're going to have to keep working the tongs back and forth to keep that rivet joint loose. Otherwise, if you do not, it will tighten up on you in one spot, and that won't be any good for you. Just giving these a good brushing. <laughs> Brian says, don't forget your touch mark. Yep, can't forget the touch mark. Thank you for reminding me. Manga says, would a cheap Harbor Freight vice work for what you just did? Yes, it will. Used one for many years before I had that vice. Fusion Rest says, do you put oil on it while working it? Uh, yes, that's my preferred method. I like to, at the end... So at the end, you'll usually see people quench their tongs in a bucket of water. Those are a little out of skew. Don't like that. Oh, here. Let me get these a little tap. That's kind of got... There we go. Do the hair. Got those straightened back up. Okay. Um, usually, you'll see people dip these in water and work the joint over with them. Uh, I don't like doing that. I like dipping them in oil usually. So I'll do that on another thing when I can take it outside. I don't like to breathe in all that oily smoke. But you got to make sure that you adjust these and keep opening and closing them. Oh, I want to go back to, was it J.G. Clark that asked about uh, the tong sizes readjusting them? No, it was somebody else. Let me see if I can find uh, it. Okay, I don't know who had asked the question about readjusting the tongs each time, but these tongs here can actually hold quite a multitude of different sizes. So that's 3 eighths round. We adjusted it to hold 3 eighths square perfectly. So it can hold 3 eighths round, but you can also hold odd stuff like so in these tongs. That's more than three-eighths there, and it's on a taper. The only difference is, is back here at the reins, they just open up a little larger on you as you go bigger. Then, of course, you can grip a lot smaller material. So I'd say that's probably really small out there at the end. I can grip all the way down to that small of material with these tongs. It's just the jaw, uh, the handle reins are a lot closer, so you have a lot, a lot less squeeze to them. Now, I did have a, uh, I did have a comment earlier um, in the day. I don't know if it was today. Pretty much told me my tongs, my tongs looked weak or um, very lightweight, so to speak, and that they prefer to make them out of heavier stock. You can make this out of heavier stock. The point that I was trying to drive home and show with these tongs 
is that you, with a very simple, commonly accessible material, which is quarter inch by one inch flat stock, you can make almost any type of tongue that you want out of that. Uh, you know, obviously you're not going to hold one inch round bar with these, but that's not what they're meant for. Most beginners don't start forging one inch round stock to start anyhow. Questions? Yes. Uh, let's see. About the oil, yes, it is Roy's mystery special quenching oil. Um, yep. We've got a video on that, like everybody was saying. So thank you guys for helping answer some of the questions. Yeah. Let's see. And uh, the title of that video is Roy's Dirty Little Secret. Yeah, that's the thumbnail. That's the thumbnail. Roy's Clickbait, I know. <laughs> uh, can you see me? Is revealed. Yes, they can see you. Yeah. The title of it is Revealed Roy's Secret Quenching Oil. I, something like that. So. Yeah. The thumbnail says Roy's Dirty Little Secret, though. I thought that was a like a nice pun. There was a lot of clicks on that video. <laughs> there was, yeah. I don't have very many secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, before the butcher, um, before the butcher block brushes, they use something called a blacksmith scraper, and yep. Roy did a video on and that I did as a video well. On that as well. So I got nope. Somewhere here, there. here it is. I did a video on how to forge you one of those as well. He said, "I saw the scraper, but was there other things?" Was there other things? Um, from what I know, from the guys that I've talked to. They did not really worry about it that much. Uh, there's some, there is some mythology around, I'm not sure if it's mythology or if it's fact, around Japanese swordsmiths and stuff would throw water on the anvil to help blow off the scale, uh, things like that. I've talked to a guy that worked in, uh, I talked to a guy by the name of Peter Ross. I actually took a class with him. I actually asked him about what they used in the, you know, like the 17th and 18th century. He was a master blacksmith at Colonial Williamsburg for about 35 years. He was the head blacksmith there. And he pretty much told on the, like, the historical side of things, they generally did not worry about the scale, uh, so to speak. You know, just tapping it, the scale would fall off the material. Or if they really had something crusted on it that they didn't want, they would use a scraper tool or the edge of the anvil to rake off the material, rake off whatever it was. Uh, reason for that being is it does you no good at a scaling heat. So anything that is above a bright orange heat or anything that's above an orange, I would just say a dull orange heat would be a better way of saying. That's to the naked eye. Anything above a dull orange heat is just going to scale. That's oxygen interacting with the surface of the steel creating iron oxide. So if you keep it at that heat and you keep brushing, you just keep producing new and new and new and more new scale. So it's pointless to brush at the really high, higher heats because it's just going to scale again anyhow. The only time you'll see me brush at a high heat is when I've got something stuck to it that I couldn't rake off from the side of the forge that was stuck to it from the fire and I'll brush it then just because I don't want to pound that foreign matter into the material. Hopefully that answers that. Mm, it does. All right. Are they officially finished? Yeah, so those are officially finished. Yay. So. All, right. All right. Well, you All right. closing. Do you so, want me to go in? Yeah, so I'm going to flip the camera around. I'm going to talk to you all for a little while longer. And then Jessica, as soon as the Beam Hammer video is released and the plans are available on the website, she's going to comment in the comment section. They are available. I've seen you guys. You've been buying some already. <laughs> I had them visible. Oh, oh, they are already available. Yeah. Well, never mind. But the, the video is not okay. up. So you the have video's to see the not video. up yet, but you want to watch the video. you got to see what it does. That's how I burnt myself. And actually, there's, really one, bad. there's one part. I think it's the third... No, it's the second. I think it's the second video clip of me forge welding the, uh, the, the billet of Damascus that I was working on. He flexes his hand. I, I stop. And it's like, why did he stop? That's not a malfunction with the hammer. That was that pool of slag rolling down my wrist. And I was trying to shake off my glove. And then I continued forging. So, yeah. so that was a, that was a fun thing. It's a fun video. You guys got to watch it. You know, well, you don't have to, but if you want to, <laughs> it'll be on after that. She'll comment in the comment section yep. after that. So I sure will. So everybody say goodbye to Jessica. And then uh, I'll finish up with you all here.
All right. There's the beam hammer. You guys have a good night. Way to show that <laughs> off. Ha-ha. <laughs> don't look. <laughs> ah, don't look. Here, we're going to flip it around. Okay, all right. I can save so, so say bye, Jessica. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> See you on the next one, guys and gals. All right. So you guys are going to be stuck with me for a second until she has that video ready for release. And then uh, I'll sign off. So did everybody enjoy this video? I'm going to sit down on Olga here. Oh, yeah. That's the benefits of having a 400-pound anvil. You're a nut. That's the way to say it. But you got to say it on the playback of this video. So these will be the tongs that you can win. I'll probably give you the better looking set, the ones that I made in the other video. I didn't like this flat in here. So um, I'm glad everybody enjoyed the video. I really hope you did. Uh, I do put a lot of effort into these videos and I, it's, it's my heart to try to teach as much as I can. I know I'm not the most knowledgeable in everything uh, that I do, but I'm glad to share what I know. Well, thank you. I'm glad. I'm glad that it shows. Uh, I hope maybe that was maybe that was meant in sarcasm. Dig gr blades. I don't know. Oh, the effort shows. Good. I, I'm glad you. I'm glad you all liked it. So. Well, I don't know if I know most more than most, Mike, but I greatly appreciate that. Those are all really great compliments. Um, you know, I'm just you know. I'm really thrilled to have the community that we got that we have here. Um, you know, I, I really am. I'm so thankful to have you all as my subscribers. We are almost at 10,000 subscribers, uh, which is crazy. That's that's absolutely mind blowing and amazing. Uh, considering we started this year uh, with only 740 subscribers, and so here nine months later. And when we say nine months later, uh, from February is when we really started trying to go in to uh, building the YouTube channel and the subscribers and really putting effort into the channel and not just like, eh, hey, we'll throw a video whenever and trying to teach. And when we did that and when we started going into more and more videos a week and this and that, you know, we've grown it in about nine months here to almost 10,000 subscribers. And obviously we couldn't have done that without you all. Um, subscribing you know that that's amazing so so thank you all so much from the bottom of my heart i really appreciate that i'm glad everybody enjoys and is learning it's given me some hope for my future fusion ross i appreciate that some people will accuse me of being a know-it-all and uh it's because of my authoritarian teaching style so I was taught very on when you know something, you say it with authority, you say it with gusto, and you stand on it until somebody proves you wrong. And that's kind of how I was taught to be. So, um, you know, that's that's how I teach. If you don't like my method, you can always make something, you can always try your own, but by all means, show everybody, you know, your work. Don't just throw out an opinion, you know. And uh, so with that kind of attitude towards things, sometimes I get accused of being a know-it-all um, and a lot of other mean things that I'm just simply not, you know. Oh, uh, I've said in one of my videos, I did a message to all fathers on Father's Day, and I, it was a message to men particularly in, in Father's Day and how they were overlooked. And I said a little bit about that, and one of the things that I said in that video is the world hates strong men. And uh, it's a true fact. People hate you if you have a spine. If you're not willing to cower and lay down at the first sign of trouble, people dislike that a lot. Because it's so easy to say something nasty and say, well, you're not politically correct. Oh, oh, oh I'm so sorry. I'm like, and? That's kind of my mentality. <laughs> and that strikes people wrong sometimes. Uh... Manga 12? Uh, yes, I've forged, uh, in fact, let me try not to fall on my face off Olga here. This here was a piece of stainless steel. FSIMS 97? It's good to see you here. It's going great. Glad to have you here. But yeah, that was stainless steel. Made out of a chunk of stainless. I don't know what type of stainless. It's a mystery stainless. Uh, let's see here. Yes, God provides FFC Rick. 
Thank you, TW. I appreciate that. Um, let's see here. <laughs> Need more moving camera shots and awesome montages. Yeah, I don't think that's going to be possible for me. I'm, uh, you know, I'm pretty much just straight lay, straight shooter. This is what we're working on, kind of guy. Yep, the rivet tool. Yeah, that's called confidence, not a know-it-all. I, I, I like that. Yeah, Mike Bosley, I definitely will. I'll tell Jessica that you said thank you. Oh, Brian Neely, you do the same. Just drop my glasses back there. You have a great weekend as well. Check out the beam hammer video if you get a chance. <laughs> well, I'm glad you find me to be a handsome man there. Uh, Sierra's man, RS. <laughs> That's funny. Yes, you can use axle shafts, Corey Shire. Uh, trying to catch up to everybody here. Let's see here. Do you ever go blue collar and swear at your work with everything but a white guy sort of language? <laughs> I'm not sure what you mean, Mangala, but, uh, you know, there are times that, you know, given my past, uh, I have in, in construction and things like that, uh, the old Roy tends to try to creep out a little bit, especially when I'm upset or stressed. And, yeah, I do my fair share of repenting in those moments and times, so I'm not a perfect person. Oh, big delay. Yeah, John Coffey. Oh. Uh, Jonathan had a good question up there, Roy. Uh, uh, Michael Scripter or uh, Jonathan just uh, re-asked the question with hashtag Roy or Tension Roy or something, and I'll try to answer it. I don't usually curse and cuss at my work. Nope. Not usually when I mess up. Like this, I can't say that I didn't have a few choice words that I wanted to say, but I was on camera. <laughs> so it kept me honest. Let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to look for that. Sorry if I missed people's... Somebody's missed... Comment... Ask about your content. Someone trying to start out almost everything. I'm glad. I'm glad, Dan Rosewood. I'm glad everything's been right at the right level. Um, Paul's garage. <laughs> That's where to go, Paul. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The work doesn't understand English swear words. Yeah, you're wasting your breath yelling at it. Yeah, Fusion Ross, I said it in my head for sure. Let's see here. Uh, Jessica just said, drum roll. Yeah, the beam hammer video is up, Michael Scripter. Awesome, awesome. Uh... Mangala uh, 12, uh, yeah, or Mang Manga, sorry, I keep call, trying to call you Mangala. Uh, manga 12, yes, I do have, um, uh, I do have a three pound hammer that I use. Occasionally I'll pull out an eight pound hammer if I need to drive a big drift, uh, and that's single handed, but I don't use it very often. It really hurts my wrist. Yeah. Jessica just dropped the link to the beam hammer. It is here. The beam hammer is up. All right. Yeah, but if you click, you'll lose the feed. Yep, that's true. So, all right. So that's supposed to be my call sign to take and get off here, everybody. Um, make sure you tune in next week. Co comment in the replay of this video. You're a nut to get entered uh, in a chance to win these tongs here. Okay. And then 
Don't forget that we have shirts available at teespring.com. We have uh, www.teespring.com forward slash beam hammer. There's actually beam hammer shirts. So if you don't want to build the beam hammer, but you still want to be to take and help uh, the channel grow and things like that, you can obviously get yourself a shirt, hoodie, or anything of the like there. And uh, anyways, we greatly appreciate you all being here. Thank you all so much for being here. We are going to, I'm going to go ahead and conclude the live stream. Uh, yeah, and uh, I look forward to putting up the build video and everything else on the Power Hammer and doing some other videos on it this upcoming week. Thank you every so everybody so much. You guys have been absolutely awesome. You guys and gals, I should say. You've been absolutely awesome. And uh, yeah, the last thing I want to say is God bless you all this weekend and this upcoming week and all that you do. And uh, like I always say, we'll catch you on the next one. Bye, y'all. Good night.